Charlie, don't talk so fast. I can't understand you. Charlie, don't panic. Just tell me. I, I, I can't. I, I think the phone is tapped. Well, then meet me in my office. We'll talk there. No, no. No, no, no. They're watching everywhere. Charlie, what do you want me to do? Come over here, please. And do be careful. Don't park in the street and drive right into the garage. And honey, don't let them see you. Just once, I want you to do something the easy way. Or is that too much to ask? If you could have heard Charlie's voice, Sam, he was terrified. And if he's not at his house, then what? Let's just hope that he is. <laughs> One simple question. Is that Charlie's house? And is that Charlie's car complete with Charlie? Yep. Yeah, no problem, no panic. And no sleep. Thanks a lot, Florence Nightingale. left of Charlie? It's crude, but accurate. Well, shall we go around again? I know it sounds wild, Lieutenant. You could say that. Charlie Neely, 51. Nice, quiet, private cop with a clean sheet. Well, you've got it all, Lieutenant. What's so hard to buy? Why did he call you? He's in a jam. He didn't call downtown or any other private eye or the PTA, just you. Why? Well, who knows? Maybe you felt friendly. We used them a couple of times when we were snowed under. Tailing jobs, leg work, strictly freelance. Well, I guess it'll have to do for now. Gonna hit the trail, Lieutenant? 
Some trail. Charlie had one relative, a sister who runs a hot dog stand. She's all I've got. Why? Well, there's no sense in our stumbling over each other. We'll get more done that way. We? Since when has H. West and Company ever walked out on a client? Honey, this is police business now. Charlie's dead. Charlie left us this. Charlie is still our client. Well, so much for leads. Well, it's a pretty good lead in itself. Charlie had something somebody wanted. Save you some shoe leather. Charlie's house was torn up the same way. Any luck with his sister? Yes and no. He wouldn't discuss it with her. He's been running scared, all right. Stayed at her place a couple of nights, like he was afraid to go home. Now well, it's getting late. Tomorrow's another day. Coming? No, I think we'll stay in fine call, Mint, just to be sure. Happy fine call. Keep in touch. Waste of time. Uh huh. Well, tomorrow is another. Say that I'm going to scream. What's up? Hmm. Let's try. Tiger's what? The Tiger's Torso, a very fancy drive-in restaurant out on Melrose. It's quite jazzy. How's the food? It's funny, I never even thought about that. Aunt Meg. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. What are you doing oh, down Meg. here? Oh, poor baby. Mm. Absolutely oh, all right, oh, really. Are you sure? Oh, my, are you it was sure? exciting. Sam, don't look at me that way. They didn't do a thing to me, not, not a thing. They? Who? Oh, Bruce, he's in there. Oh, oh some watchdog you are, half pussy cat, half chicken. Well, you know how he hates violence. What oh. happened, Aunt Meg? Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. They came bursting in here about, about 20 minutes ago. A, a, a couple of hoods. Hoods? Well, that's what you always call them. A couple of big rough men with, with, with guns. Oh, I, I asked them what they wanted, but they were searching all over the place. And I asked them what they wanted, but not a word out of either one of them. Would you look at all this mess? Good heavens, just like men, they never put a thing back where it belongs. Ed May, what do they look like? Uh, look like, oh, just ugly, uh, with, with stockings over their heads. I, I didn't do very well, did I? We did just fine, Meg, just fine. Well, I, oh, well, at least I didn't come away empty-handed. Look, when one of them was tying me up, I, I, I picked his pocket. You what? Well, you know, uh, I was trying for a, a wallet, identification, you know. Uh, you understand. Uh, wrong pocket. That's all I got. Charlie Neely, 1143 Montgomery Street. that around the office. We could up the fee. How you do carry on. I'm not too sure about this setup, though. It may not lead us anywhere at all. It already has. See that man at the cashier's counter? His name is Mr. 
Mr. Garth is the owner. It's a strange thing happening here, Sam. It's happened twice this morning. The car drives in and uh, he takes care of it personally. So maybe he likes a personal touch. Nope. They're both takeout orders. They both were ready. They didn't have to wait. Well, tip me off if that happens again. Right. Have you arrested for this? I'm trying to catch a plane and you're gonna make me miss it. Big deal, private eye. Look, I'm in a hurry. I know you're gonna miss your plane, you told me. I'm sorry. Look, I, uh... I'm sorry I'm holding you up like this and your uh, lunch is getting cold. A box lunch on a jet? I hear they serve great meals. Or maybe, uh... You're on a special diet, huh? Take off your hat, Sam. What hat? Take it, then. You're in the presence of genius. Oh, Wiley, no fancy flights of rhetoric, just the plot, please. Let's put it this way, Sam. Blimey, a British pound note that the British government didn't even know it made. Because it didn't. Funny money. A do-it-yourself job? Sure, but put a little respect in your voice, Sam. Would you call Pasteur just a doctor? It's that good, huh? Beautiful. Paper, ink, and that plate. Oh, a man with a real social security plan. Poor Miller. Uh, wait a minute. Now, slow. Who's Miller? Well, I, I may be wrong, Sam, but I doubt it. <laughs> There's only one engraver I know that could have made a plate like this. A little old guy whose name is uh, Walter Miller. Walter Miller. Anything else I should know? So that's the whole story. And that money is as phony as that tiger skin you're wearing. Wonder how it connects to poor old Charlie. I don't know. Mr. Garth has a very private telephone. Maybe if I planted a monitor. Okay. Meantime, I'll talk to Charlie's sister. See if she comes up with something. Come back and see us. Oh, pussycat. Thanks a lot, Diamond Jim. Mr. Guard, your phone is ringing. Oh, thank you. Dottie, will you cover for me? Hello there. 
You can't read, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but the man said it was very important. What man? A customer. He drove in and he said he wanted to see you personally. Uh, I said I'd try to find you and he just drove off. He seemed worried. I thought you ought to know. I know who you are, Mr. Bolton. And I sure appreciate what you're trying to do for Charlie. Look, I've told the lieutenant everything I can think of. I know. And still you want to look through my house? Why? Miss Neely, even after Charlie died, somebody searched his office. They searched his house. Something's missing. We don't know what. Now, Charlie stayed at your place. He could have hidden it in your house. If we knew what it was, it might help. How can you help Charlie now? There's someone you don't help. The man who killed your brother. Oh. It's 917 DeSoto Street. I didn't have time to dust this morning. I'm sorry. Yes? Some operation you run. What are you talking about? About a private eye who nailed me on the way to the airport. That's all. I got away by inches. And the paper? What about the paper? He grabbed it. Look, if you think I'm going to eat the loss... All oh, right. I'll make it good. Hang up. i got to make a call. Hello? Uh, this is Garth. Don't come by today. No pickup. Not good enough, Garth. My people in London won't wait. Look, something's going on here. That's your problem now. You've already been paid. I need that pickup today. All right. But not here. The other place. You understand? I understand. I'll leave in an hour. Sam? Did you hear me? Sam, where are you? past Greendale. Well, honey, forget about Garth and go home, do you hear me? What are you holding back? Charlie Neely was involved in this counterfeiting. Charlie? I'll never buy that. Yeah, well, listen to this. According to the lieutenant, Charlie Neely was hired to find a missing person, Walter Miller. Well, it looks like he didn't want it known. He hid the files. I found them in his sister's cellar. It's unprofessional, but he probably had a reason. I can give you a view. Walter Miller is an expert printer and plate maker. Picked up three times on suspicion of counterfeiting. But we'll never know until we nail Garth. That's right. It's a job for the police now, honey. Try to keep up, Sam. I'll keep in contact. Honey, will you go home? Will you for once listen to reason? Glad to see someone. Talk about being lost. Now, I know that that's Lake Roper over there, but that hunting lodge is throwing me. We are south of the lake, aren't we? Waitress, huh? Well, no one's what he seems to be. You ought to know. Where do you fit? Oh, you got the plates, huh? All right. How much do you want? Name a figure. Fifty grand. That's ten grand a set. If you bargain with me, I'll drop you in the lake. Fifty big ones. That's it. Hundred? You just blew it. In a minute, you'll be screaming for free. Come 
party's over. Up. You have some unwrapping to do. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. A little bit warm, but I'm all right. Well, we have a neat little package for the lieutenant. Why don't you give him a jingle? Okay. parties, but this is ridiculous. Shall we try the lieutenant again? Sam, my car. Keep him coming. Garth hired you to find Walter Miller. Then you found him and killed him. Well, Sam, it was an accident. I, I swear it. Miller put up a fight. He came at me like a like a madman. Well, I I searched his place and then I knew why. I'd found what he'd stolen. Counterfeit plates. Five sets. For five foreign countries. Garth was printing up foreign money for Americans to use abroad. Didn't take much figuring, did it, Charlie? Garth getting fat on all those plates. And you got hungry. Decided to go into business for yourself, huh? Yeah, but he had one problem. He knew that Garth would never stop looking for him. Unless he was dead. So he figured he'd fake his own death. Using Miller's body. Then you'd be home free, is that right? That's it. That's not all of it, Charlie. Why Sam and me? But don't you see? I had to have time to, to make up my plans. I, I, I had to have a place to put those plates where I knew I could always get at them. Your car. I welded them beneath the fenders. They're still there. The most valuable car in town. You said I paid too much for it. Say that again. How thoughtful. Well, it wasn't me. It was some secret admirer, I bet. Lieutenant Barney. Yep. You know, you'd need a bulldozer to cut through the happiness downtown. All the heavies are safe in the pokey? And talking. That Barney's a whiz. Garth is admitting to everything except the sinking of the Lusitania. All's well that ends. Gee, I'm sorry I wasn't more help. You, my beauty, were the star. Picking that hood's pocket. That was a key clue. I know you're fibbing, but... Thanks anyway. Sam, you didn't tell the lieutenant about that, did I you? I certainly did, and you know, he fell down laughing. Oh, by the way, Aunt Meg, he said to quit while you're ahead because it's habit for me. I expect he's right. Thank you. 